It is what I call a super accentuating technology. It's an amplifying technology. What do I mean by that? So not only can AI help with every single one of these fields, biology, chemistry, infrastructure, whatnot, the progress in each of these fields can be fed back. Bring me a model from evolution, bring me a model from biology, bring me a model from physics, and I will integrate it into my computer, into my, uh, into my algorithms to help solve a problem that meets its morphology. That is incredibly exciting because the story of modern age, the story that historians call industrialization, and economists call or measure via progress, is one of increasing automation. And that's something we should remember while we are worried about the future of AI taking over and things like that. Our dharma is one of progress, and AI is going to help us there. The second reason why I'm incredibly excited about AI is because it forces something so human, something so important, and that's philosophical progress. We kicked off this talk with what is intelligence? That, in the long history of humans questioning everything about the world and the meaning of life, that is actually a relatively new question. We don't yet have an answer for that. So how can you create something intelligent if you don't have a definition? Or even better, if you don't have a system, will it just automatically emerge? And let me assure you that AGI, that artificial general intelligence that summarizes the entire quadrant on the left top, that mimics an entire human and all of humanity, we don't really have any viable path toward it. So does the thinking then become, hey, if we build it, we will learn more about it, and you know, engineers do things that way, and there's some merit to that. We actually learn more about a system, perhaps we learn more about us. But more importantly, philosophical progress leads itself to societal progress. Most physicists, brilliant minds, um, technologists, mathematicians start out actually asking very large philosophical questions. For example, Turing, Alan Turing, one of the fathers of AI, starts out in his 1950 paper asking, can machines think? And then very quickly, does a classic bait and switch. He says, ah, this is a problem that's too complex to answer right now. So instead, how about we ask a, ask a simpler question? Can machines imitate humans? And that became later known as the Turing test. So it's by taking these large philosophical questions that do we make progress. So we all know that technology is applied science. Science is applied philosophy.